Ma'am, we have not really reviewed very much other than just a little bit one day. So I want to make sure we at least hit on some of the highlights of the exam. So we're ready for this problem right here. The tangent of 120 degrees. So we're going to draw 120 degrees, remembering our standard position labels. So we draw 120 degrees. We draw the perpendicular always to the x-axis. Remember that little butterfly bow tie deal? Then we got to figure out using our logic, how big is this angle right here? 60. 60. And then you'll notice on the reference sheet down here, I have some 30, 60, 90 um, triangle, or a 30, 60, 90 triangle drawn, so you can go ahead and label the sides, just like on the reference sheet. But, and again, some of this, you just have to, you're, you're taking the test, so you gotta have some of it down. Something's negative in that picture. What's negative in that picture? The one. Mm-hmm. Because we're left. There's the origin. We're left. So you gotta remember what tangent is. Hopefully you know that, but it is on your reference sheet. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So that will be root three over negative one or negative root three. Now, and again, the exam is just a hodgepodge of everything we've learned, so these aren't connected at all. This is a separate problem. This is simplifying exponents. What do we do there? We have to clean that up. What do we do with that? Don't flip it. We don't flip it, the whole thing, but you definitely would want to move that guy probably because he is negative. So we'll go ahead and move him to the bottom because that's what we do with negative exponents, right? We move them to the bottom. Now, what do we need to do next? Well, we have to take everything to the one half power, which means we're gonna multiply those exponents. So four times a half is two. Nine to the one half, I'm gonna have to figure out what that is, nine to the one half and then y to the fourth, eight times a half. Anybody remember what nine to the one half is? This is a no calculator problem. Anybody remember what nine to the one half is? No, that's nine times one half, but nine to the one half means Three. the square, yeah, it means the square root of nine, so that is a three. So your answer is x squared over three y to the fourth. Remember, fractional exponents are radicals. Fractional exponents are radicals. Okay, I wrote this one over here. It's a little equation, got a couple of equations here to solve. Anybody remember how to do this one? This is about a two second problem. Uh, loop -de -loop. Loop -de -loop. So it's gonna be five to the negative second equals x. Five to the negative second equals x. And then what does that mean? One over five squared. Kids, it's just like this. What do we do with that guy? We brought him to the denominator, right? What do you do with this guy? You bring him to the denominator. So the answer is one over 25. What about this? That is uh, very hard looking. Actually, it's not though, Patrick. Don't you like put them, whatever there is, like the square root of three? Yeah, so, so nine is three squared, and 27 is three cubed. So we took the nine and the 27 and wrote them both as powers of three. On one of the review sheets, like this is a four and this is an eight. Okay, we wouldn't write them as threes, then we would write them as twos. Two squares, four to the third is eight. Once you get it to here, then it's easy. We're gonna multiply, that's a distribute there. We're gonna multiply those exponents. And that's going to be um, three to the six x plus two and three to the three X plus 12.
Now, what does your common sense tell you at this point? If three to this power is three to this power, what does that mean? The order of three. The powers are the same, yeah. So six x plus two has to be the same as three x plus 12. So it looks like, if I did my arithmetic right, just solving this little equation, set the exponents equal to each other, and it looks like x equals 10 thirds. Okay, now, how about this one? 400 degrees is how many radians? And um, 8 pi over 3 is how many degrees? There's different versions of the test. Somebody's going to do that problem. Somebody's going to do this one. Okay? So, anybody remember anything about either one of them? April? So, pi is 180. So basically what you have here is 8 times 180 divided by 3. Now, this is a no calculator problem. So April, you are absolutely fine multiplying 8 times 180 and then dividing by 3. Personally, I'm going to divide first because I know that 180 divided by 3 is 60. And then I have to take 60 times 8, which I know is 480 degrees. But as long as you're getting 480, the order that you do it doesn't matter. You can do whatever order you want. You, you have to multiply and divide in this problem. Um, great, perfect. All right, what about this one, the other way around? Pi is still 180. And we want to know what makes 400. If pi makes 180, what makes 400? Remember this little proportion? So now we'll cross multiply. And divide. And these are the ones that simplify very easily. Usually a zero cancels, which is what happens here. So we have 40 over 18, which is divisible by 2. So the answer is 20 pi over 9. Remember, today is not a day for me to be teaching you anything. I'm trying to jog your memory. I tried to teach all this earlier. Hopefully, you got it somewhere. Just take it out and practice it a little bit. All right, now we need our calculators. We're going to do a couple calculator problems. Um, the test is two pages, just like in all our tests this year have been pretty much two pages. One page front and back, calculator, and one page front and back, no calculator. Okay, it's a class period, so it's just a regular test. In my handwriting, with answer blanks, I mean, it looks just like they always look. Okay, so this is these two are going to be on the calculator part. Um, actually, I'm going to change these numbers. And I'll change these Both of these are find the area. Find the area. Okay? Now, if you look at your reference sheet, put up at the top there, there are a couple of area formulas. What do you think about this picture right here? How am I going to find the area of this guy? Well, one half, one half base times height is how I find the area of the triangle, but I don't have the altitude here. I don't have the height. So um, that would be a bit problematic. So I'm going to use what's called Hero's Formula. And again, we did all this. We learned all this. It's on the reference sheet. You just have to go back and review. To do Hero's Formula, the first thing we do is find the perimeter. <coughs> so let's see. The perimeter is uh, 40. So then I need the semi-perimeter, which is 20. So my formula up there for Hero's formula says 
start with that 20, and then do 20 minus each side. So 20 minus 11, 20 minus 12, and 20 minus 17. Then we just type it in and take the square root, and the area is 65.7. Now, this is another area problem. How come I'm not going to do that problem the same way I did this one? It only has two sides. I don't have, yeah. And the whole key to doing this is being able to find the perimeter, right? So I'm going to use my other area formula here, which says one half side times side times sine of included angle. That's the formula. One half side, side, sine of included angle. So that one area is about 137.71. While we've got our calculators out, let's try this one. area even though that triangle looks a lot like that one this one says find X which is a side how do we find sides of the triangle or angles either one sides or angles we use our law of sines or cosines which are actually the first things on the sheet up there. Which one is this one going to be? Is this going to be a law sines problem or a law cosines problem? Okay, guys. Remember this whole thing? Do I have a pair of anything here in this picture? Do I have an angle in its side? Okay, do I know that angle? Okay, so that ain't gonna work. Do I know that angle? Oh, that's not gonna work. Do I know that side? That's not gonna work. If I don't have that pair, then I'm gonna have to do the law of cosines. Yep, so law of cosine says x squared equals 15 squared plus 17 squared minus two times 15 times 17 times cosine 39. Now this is very, very easy to type in, <coughs> but you do have to remember one thing. Remember when you get all that typed in, that's x squared. So we have to remember to square root there. So that side is actually going to be about 15.85. All right, now we'll drop that to a couple more no calculator problems. Um, what about this equation right here? Amplitude and period. That's all you need to know. Either both of them or one of them, but that's it. So can you tell me either one about, or can you tell me anything about this equation? Okay. Well, if I have to graph it, which you don't on your exam, but if you do have to graph it, it would look like this. And these labels would be one half and negative one half. So the amplitude of the curve is one half. That's how high and low the hills and valleys go. Under normal circumstances, these labels are 90, 180, 270, and 360. That would be normal. 
that this problem is not normal because it has that number stuck in. What does that number do to these numbers? Uh, divides it. That number is a divider. That number always divides. Whatever it is, it divides. So this last label in 70 and 360 would be 90, and that is the period of the function. <coughs> Whatever that last label ends up being. Okay. Let me throw a couple matrices up here. So matrix A maybe is 3, 2, negative 1, 5. And matrix B is 0, 1, 7, 8. And we are going to do um, A minus 2B. This is no calculator, but that is easy. A minus 2B. So we're going to take matrix A. And we're going to subtract the Catherine. I have, the, I have the absolute 100% right to have you take the exam, and I will do that if you don't pay attention. All right, this is a class period. You're going to be paying attention. So A minus 2B. So A minus, now I'm going to take 2 times B. So that means, let just like distribute it, take it all times 2, right? And now I'm going to subtract. So I... Put the minus right here, and then I times everything by 2, and now I'm going to use that minus. I'm going to subtract. So 3 minus 0, 2 minus 2, negative 1 minus 14, and 5 minus 16. There is your answer. Now, you're also going to have to multiply A times B. All right, anybody remember how to do this? We are going to multiply A times B. Anybody remember how to do that? Well, it's a 2 by 2, and a 2 by 2, they're both two rows, two columns, which means I can do it. Remember, there are some times you can't. And the answer will be a 2 by 2. So I am going to have four numbers to fill in, two rows, two columns. Now, that guy right there is going to come from the first row and the first column. So I'm going to write down my first row, and then I'm going to next to it put my first column. So the first goes with the first, the second goes with the second, and then I'm going to multiply each pair and add them up. So that first number is a 14. Now we're doing this, and I'm going to do the same thing here, only I'll be using the top row again. But now I'm using the 1 and 8. So it looks like that one's going to be a 19. And 35. Hmm, 39. Check my arithmetic. Does that look okay to everybody? All right. Let's suppose that I have a busload of kids. I've got um, 40 kids on the bus, and um, 32 of them love math. And 27 of them love English. English. How many like only English? Okay, so what's our strategy? 
energy for this guy. Can you draw the box? Draw a box, Venn diagram. This box has 40 kids in it. All right, let's see here. Could you add them up and then subtract? So, the kids are all sitting there, and I said, how many like math, and 32 hands went up, and then 27 hands went up. Well, how many hands is that that went up? Way more than 40. Way more than 40. How many more than 40? 60. No, 59. Well, no. 59 is how many went up, no, which means 19 more than 40. So these 19 are the ones that like both. So if, if there are 32 kids who love math, but 19 of them are in the overlap, then there must be 13 over here. And if there are 27 kids that love English, but 19 are in the overlap, there must be eight of them over here. And those are the ones that are the answer to the question, because the question happened to want to know how many like only English. So that would be that. All right, so now we've got something that says find the um, third term of 2x minus y to the sixth. All right, how do I do this? Oh, you want to triangle? Pascal's triangle will help me find my coefficient for sure. Because whatever my third term is, it's going to be some coefficient, a 2x, and a negative y to some powers. So that coefficient is going to come from Pascal's triangle. So make sure you know how to build it. I'm not going to make you go to the 20th row or anything crazy like that. Here's my sixth row, which is the one I want. How do I know I want the sixth row? Six power. Now, I want the third term. So that's the 15. That's my coefficient. That's what goes right here. Now, what's the only other part of this that I have to do yet? I'm almost done. The exponent. I have to do the exponent. So if I were doing the whole row, we did problems where we wrote down 1, 6, 15, 20, we wrote them all down, and then we counted them down, 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 now I need to do that. But I'm not gonna do it all, I'm just gonna imagine it. If I were putting exponents on this guy right here, the two x would be to the sixth. Here it would be to the fifth, and here it is to the fourth. So my two x is to the fourth, which means my negative y is to the second because they have to add up to six. Now, we're almost done, but not quite. We have to multiply everything together. So we have a 15. Be careful, this is where we screw up sometimes. This is a 16x to the fourth, and that's a positive y squared. So we're going to multiply 15 times 16. So 240x to the fourth y squared is the third term of that big expansion. Okay, that's exactly right. You can do it that way. 18 times 17 times 16. 
or you can think of it as 18p. Either one of those is okay. <coughs> now, I gotta caution you. What if I were giving away three notebooks? Yeah, if I were giving away three notebooks, this won't work. This won't work. If you're giving away three of the same thing, it's 18C3. That's the only way to do it. Okay, the, the P1s, you can do this way too if you want. Be careful, be careful, be careful. All right. Suppose that I have this class of 18 and um, 12 of them are boys, six of them are girls, and I'm gonna pick a committee of two boys and two girls. How many ways can I do that? I'm picking a committee of two boys and two girls from this class of people. Patrick? And what am I doing with the, you're exactly right, what am I doing with those two numbers? No! Two boys and two girls means I multiply. When do I add? When it's this or this. If you are doing both together, boys and girls, that is a multiply problem. All right. By per hand. What's the probability of at least three hearts? Actually, let me make that four. So it's not such a long problem. At least four hearts. By per hand, what's the probability of, at, of getting at least four hearts? What's your thought on that? Is it 13 C4 or 52 C5? He's on the way. He isn't there yet, but he's on the way. What's this? The denominator. That's total, right? 52 cards, and I'm picking five. That's absolutely correct in the denominator. What's wrong with my numerator? Then we need like a 30. We need another card. Because isn't this a five card hand? And four of them are hearts. That's right here. But I need and another card that isn't a heart. So what's that other card going to be? A spade, a diamond, or a club. And there's 39 of those. And I'm going to pick one. Now, we're still not done. What's this? What question does this answer? Find the probability of getting exactly four hearts. That's what happened right here, right? We got four hearts. What else do we want, though, possibly? We also can consider having five hearts. Now, the denominator is going to be the same. But now, what's the numerator going to look like? If our cards are all going to be hearts, what's that going to be? 13C5. And since I can have either four hearts or five hearts, what am I going to do with these two numbers? Uh, add them. Yeah. That was going to take a little while to get all typed in and everything, but that's the setup. Good start with that, Patrick. Okay. Let's suppose um, that you do six problems on the first day of school, ten problems on the second day, fourteen problems on the third day, and so on. How many will you have done? by day 180, 180th day of school. So, I'm abbreviating this, obviously, because we're about out of time, but so you, 
On the first day of school, you did six problems. On the second day, you did 10 problems. On the third day, you did 14. And you kept going, kept going, kept going all year. How many will you have done by the end of the year? All right, so what's going on here? Patrick? Uh, you can do 179 times four and add over six. Okay, so let's, let's look at that. Patrick is using, um, I can't find it that formula right there, that's your arithmetic. First of all, does everybody recognize this is arithmetic? So he says the 180th term is going to be 6 plus 4 times 179. Now, that we need that number, but that number is not the answer to the question. That happens to be 722. What does that 722 represent in this problem? That's, if I kept this list going, that's how many you did on the last day of school. Now, is that what this problem asks? How many will you have done? What does that mean? All together? How many has he done after three days? He did this many the first day, this many the second day, this many the third day. After three days, hasn't he done all those added up? We want to add up the first 180. So then we're going to use, we need this number. We needed that. It's not the answer to the question, but we needed it. So the sum of 180, using another formula right there, is this. So that says take 180 over 2. And then this is your first plus your last. So we did have to figure out what that last term is. And then that will be the sum of all of them. All right, really quickly, I need you to look at, uh, I need, you don't have papers. We need to look at a couple of limits because these are easy questions and everybody get the right answers. See if you can find these limits. Make sure you look at that. 